Good Morgan. Uh, uh, it's uh, really very nice to be back in Germany. Uh, I, a lot of you know my mother is German, so I have a special connection uh, with here. Uh, my father is Greek, so I'm basically European. But I, I do live in Australia, and it was 27 hours to get here. And as you'll see, this is relevant because I want to talk about this problem. Um, but today, uh, I have uh, a very, I know there was a lot of thank yous already, but I also just want to reiterate the thank yous to, to the university for hosting, very much appreciate it, and the organisers who made things happen, in particular, Ulrika, a friend of mine who I know works a lot behind the scenes getting little things done, um, as do other people, but thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so I have, I think I have 85 slides for 60 minutes. So I'm going to be going a little fast. Uh, there's not a lot of slides that are humorous. This is serious business. So, uh, and I'm very sorry that my mother never taught me German. Um, I'm going to have to do this in English. I apologise. But um, let me tell you about a few things. So. Where I grew up in Australia looked like this, and we used to like making fires. And I thought Germany probably liked to hear about fires, nice and warm. Um, so when you make a fire, you start with something small. And remember the animation that was on before, it kind of looked like a fire. That was the development of Moodle. You start with something small, you put small sticks, you grow it, you put bigger sticks, you put bigger things, you get bare grills to come in and blow on it. Um, and eventually you can make a very, very big fire and a lot of people can get warm around that fire. So Moodle is a bit like a fire. We have this open source project, it's very dynamic, there's a lot of people taking it and changing it and doing things with it and it's, it has a life of its own and I enjoy coming to these conferences especially because I get to learn what's happening in Moodle uh, as much as tell people what's happening in Moodle. Uh, Germany is sitting there on the list at uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 most number of Moodle sites. Um, and uh, that's pretty good work. But it's very interesting seeing uh, how many of those top 10 uh, don't speak English, too. Uh, it's a very international project. This uh, was from last year. This is higher education in Europe. So about two-thirds of higher education in Europe is using Moodle. And so Moodle is obviously very important to the infrastructure of education here in Europe, but also in, in other parts of the world. Uh, if I go to South America, I went to Brazil, I was speaking to a conference, I had 2,000 people, and I said, everybody, who's, uh, everybody stand up. And I said, okay, everyone put your hand on the shoulder of the person next to you. I said, we are all connected. I said, everybody who doesn't use Moodle, sit down. It was like 10% sat down. Uh, I said, sorry, you're disconnected. Um, <laughs> but it's like 90% uh, in some places. So what's new in the world? Well, we have big problems in the world. Big, serious problems. Massive increasing inequality. The rich are getting richer, the poor are getting poorer. In, in my country, which is supposedly a rich Western country, uh, people, a single person with a job cannot afford a house to live in. Bizarre, right? Um, food, water security. These are the big problems if you go and look at the UN website. The UN uses Moodle too, by the way, for a lot of things. Um, Simple things like food and water security is a problem. We have a refugee crisis. Germany is doing very well in that, I have to say. Um, a lot of countries are not. There's 65 million people on the move. Climate change, data privacy and ownership. Very big wars being fought over data. Who owns our data? Who controls our interactions? Automation. And jobs. What does it mean when we automate our jobs? Uh, healthcare quality and education quality. As uh, things get massified, 
uh, technified, what happens to the quality. And these are very big problems, right? We are all facing it. We are all living in this world, and most of us have children, and what are, what's going to happen with our children's children? And this is why I'm in this business. I'm in this business because education is actually connected to all of this. A very interesting statistic is that uh, I, someone told me yesterday, actually, that now five people, five single people, have more money than 50% of the world's population. That's just insane. And private wealth is growing faster than the economy right now. So people who have a lot of money, their, their personal money is, is actually becoming a larger and larger percentage of the total economy of the world. So I had, I had the USA on this and someone said, don't, don't, don't blame the USA, but I, I'd like to blame the USA. So the Silicon Valley model, this idea of uh, capitalism where you have uh, an idea and you pump venture capital into it and you pump it up to this and you look for an exponential curve and ultimate growth. This model, it comes back from uh, Milton Friedman mostly, people claim, uh, the economist in the 70s, that profit is everything. Profit is the, the goal. Profit is the game. And I was at a conference in Silicon Valley with a lot of people running uh, companies. It was 10,000 CEOs of software companies. And I kept asking them, why are you doing this business? And they often didn't have an answer, because the only answer was money. So, just as an example, the US, which is 5% of the world's population, has 25% of the money in the world, and uses 30% of the world's resources. So the model of business and profit cannot work for the rest of the world. Like, it's simply not possible. There's not enough resources for it to work. And that's what's caused a lot of the problems that, we ha that we're seeing today. And when you hear the language of profit-driven companies, they're usually talking about disruption. We're going to disrupt, we're going to replace, we're going to compete, and we're going to break things, and then our thing and we'll win and make profit. Right? Now, for me, that's not a good way of thinking about things. This is how I prefer to think about things. Taking what we have, supporting, nurturing, improving, fixing, because a lot of the institutions and the methods and the things that we have, such as the education system, the public education system, um, they work really well, they work fine. And they shouldn't be attacked by companies saying, oh, teachers can't do the job anymore, we now have this solution. We need to fix whatever is going wrong and make it better. That's my opinion. And then, how many people agree with me? So, okay. Good. So there is a whole movement of people who work, who think about these things. A whole open movement, right? So Moodle is open source, um, but there are many, very many other open movements, and we're part of that. Um, we have open open uh, government, open standards, open education uh, resources, open education, all these things. So I like these guys and I think that although we have always been part of that, Moodle has not worked very closely with these in the past, but that's t it's time for that to change. We need to be much more integrated with these projects working together to, uh, to improve and nurture and fix the things that we have. So, for me it's about empowering educators. And I have this shirt here. This is our, our new Moodle shirt. Um, there are still some left in the registration room. First come, first served. Um, this is our new the, the Moodle mission. So, if, if you treat education as a basic human right, and you have the idea that the best school is the one close to you, always. Um, and people often point to Finland. Finland, I, I was with the Minister of Education of Finland in Russia uh, at a conference. And I had dinner with her and I was like, so how did you make this change? Everyone talks about Finland, how did this happen? She said it took 40 years of effort, 
a whole, almost two generations, to, to change the culture so that teachers became respected. Teachers were like lawyers, like doctors, like scientists. They get paid very well, they stay in the profession, they have a lot of experience, and they're very, very good at what they do. And they have the resources that they need. Um, and I, I think that's really, it just makes so much sense, right? This is what we all have to do, but it's a very, very big change. In most countries, that's a couple of generations work. And no government is going to sit down and do that because governments get re-elected every few years. So it's kind of up to us, the educators, to actually make that change. The last bit there, I think it's very crucial that if we're going to tackle the big problems, that we need to be looking at more cross-cultural collaboration. It's, a lot of us are comfortable in our own world. A lot of the problems seem far away. But if you're actually talking with those people and being with those people, it's a lot closer and it's a lot easier to work on problems together. So I wanted to, all of this leads to the, new, the mission of Moodle. So the mission, why we exist, is empowering educators to improve our world. That's why we exist. That's why I started Moodle. At the beginning, I didn't quite have the words for it. We had another mission that said the same thing with many, many words. But now it's down to like uh, six words in English. The vision is that we want to give the world the most effective platform for learning. It doesn't, it's, the word open in there is not in there because it's beyond that actually. It just simply must be the best. You, you pick Moodle because there's nothing better than that. The, our values, and have never changed, so there are education, everything is about education really, at every level. Openness, our values are open, we try to be open in how we do our project, we be open with our community, internally, externally, and uh, open to all types of users, so that means accessibility, it means cross-cultural, as open as we can be. It ties in with respect, to be respectful of different cultures, to be respectful of uh, everybody's contributions, large and small. Integrity, so we try and be ethical, we try and do things in the right way, we try and find the right way through consensus. And innovation, we try and promote the idea that you can make experiments, that you can do crazy things sometimes, because that's where the interesting stuff happens, when people take a little risk and go beyond what's, uh, what's established. So what are we doing uh, from my perspective at, at Moodle HQ? So here are some big things that we're doing. The first one is we're moving to Europe. And I said I was European. And I, I, have, I come here, I travel a lot. This is actually where Moodle, it's kind of like Moodle's home, if you like. Um, spiritually. I find there's a much better cultural fit with openness uh, in Europe than anywhere else. And uh, so we're slowly moving th uh, things to Europe, away from the end of the world in Australia. We'll still have an office there for a long time, I'm sure. But we're having a new subsidiary in uh, the EU. It's probably going to be in Barcelona because the weather is nice and they have mojitos. <laughs> um, but um, it, being in Europe, I mean, to you, Europe feels very big. To me, Europe feels very small. Travelling is so easy here. You can go anywhere. It's, so, it's, it's really uh, very cool. Um, the second part is we're la launching a, a non-profit Moodle Foundation uh, that will be independent and be based probably in Brussels because this is where all the politicians are. And in education, most of them are in Luxembourg, so it's kind of close. So this will be an organisation that's getting involved with uh, the EU grant funding, Horizon 2020, this sort of stuff. And this is for us to get much more involved with things here. And that's really our, our goal, is we want to get a lot more connected with what's going on here, um, the, the community in Europe and elsewhere, the funding opportunities, 
Now, I heard that the Horizon 2020 put out like 80 billion euros last year, something like that. You, you're nodding. That's a lot of money. And when I was talking to people about the education projects that this money goes into, it seemed like half of them used Moodle in some way. Guess how many calls I got from people saying, hey, Moodle, why don't you come in and, and work on this too? Zero. None. Not a single euro came towards us, towards the Moodle project from this. Now, what, I, what I'm told is that a lot of these projects, people collect millions of euros, they build some software, it's finished, and then they go on to the next project, and this thing never gets used, it never lives, it dies. What a waste of public money. If we can get those sorts of projects into core Moodle, the whole world benefits. Right? So this is a big focus for me. How do we now get those two things connected better? So there's that. And also research work. Uh, I went to an IEEE education, engineering education conference in Athens a couple of months ago. Uh, literally 70% of all the presentations were done in Moodle. They're like, hey, we did this new approach, we tried this new approach, we, we used Moodle, we implemented it, uh, we studied it, we got some great results, we wrote our paper, and finish. Never seen again. It's a paper in a journal, done. And it's like, what? Uh, how, that should be contributing to software that is in the community that we all use. So... We want to get a lot more involved with research. And lastly, we're building new products and new platforms to help the community, and I want to go through some of that now. So there are the seven main projects that we work on. Uh, Moodle Core, obviously, that's the main Moodle. And Moodle Mobile, the Moodle Partner Services, Moodle Cloud, Moodle Training, Moodle Academy and the Moodle Community, and I'm going to go through these now. So, what's new in Moodle? Well, how many people here are not very familiar with Moodle, actually? A few? Put your hand up if it's a bit new. Cool. Um, so, this was for you, just to explain what Moodle is. So, Moodle is a, a platform that is the intersection of all of these other things. Users, courses competencies, administration, it's uh, the bit in the middle that joins those together. And it connects with plugins to things that are outside, other systems, so you can have integrations or custom plugins, there are many that people have added. And then you access that through devices, so it could be a laptop, it could be a mobile device, uh, we're looking at virtual reality stuff, uh, we actually have a virtual reality room in the Moodle office. Um, and uh, that's a very interesting point. More augmented reality is where it's going to be. And voice interfaces. Um, and particular courses are made up of these activities or resources which are the plugins basically. And that's how you make up courses. So this basic structure of Moodle will never be obsolete. Like the idea that an education experience is a sequence of activities, it doesn't matter if we all become half androids in a hundred years, uh, we will probably still be learning things in roughly the same way. Um, the basics of this don't change. It's more the technologies and the methods and things change. So back to, down to reality and, and the very pragmatic presence. So we just released Moodle 3.3. The big features in there were the office integrations, the new dashboard, uh, and a bunch of other things here, analytics. So, um, not everybody wants to log into their site using Google or Microsoft logins, but some people, many people do. So, we now have a new OAuth uh, framework, and you can very easily set up Moodle to authenticate from other systems. And it, it doesn't just have to be Google and Microsoft, it can be anything that offers authentication sources. Uh, the Office integrations now extend right down into the documents. So Moodle now controls a whole, all of the files 
that people bring into the system on Google Drive or Office 365. And what that means is if you're a student and you have a document on an Office system that you submit to an assignment as a submission, uh, the, your, your editing rights, Moodle will take them away and give the teacher editing rights. The file stays on the <coughs> Office Drive. It's not in Moodle, it's actually out on the Office Drive. And so Moodle can control the permissions as it needs to, to uh, manage these, the way files are handled. So that's quite useful to use the Office system as a repository for documents. Um, now, I don't like the fact that the only ones we have implemented are Google and Microsoft. So uh, the very next one is uh, going to be Next Cloud. And uh, there's a guy called Jan here who's going to be, he's going to be demonstrating tomorrow or this afternoon? Today. Uh, an own cloud integration that might not be quite the same as this, but it's in the right direction. So uh, soon Moodle will have support for that too, I'm sure. Uh, we did work on the dashboard. Now, that's the first page you see when you come in that gives you an overview of your courses for a student. Now, what I'm actually showing here is not a screenshot. This is one of our UX uh, prototypes. And it's the first time in the Moodle project, in the core anyway, that we developed software the proper way, which is you have prototypes and you have UX researchers and you do user testing on the prototypes again and again and again until you have very high quality prototypes and then you give that to developers to say make that. Um, and that is how we're doing everything now inside Moodle. So that means we should have higher quality coming out the other end. Um, we're still making mistakes uh, and there were some things we already had to fix in 3.3 but it's a better process. It's uh, much more uh, mature. So this is another view of how the courses look on that page um, where you can see your courses listed. Now that was a project that came from the Moodle Users Association and that they specified and paid for. Another thing in 3.3 .3 is that uh, it's actually a separate plugin but it's designed for 3.3 .3 is the very first step on our new analytics uh, platform. Now I say platform because there are many ways to think about analytics. Analytics means studying the data inside the system and pulling out of that useful insights, useful ideas. So ideally, in the end, you want to get a little notification on your phone as a teacher to say, oh, this student is in trouble, you should give them a call, right, um, as one example. But there are many, many other notifications that you can imagine you might want to get Moodle to tell you proactively. So the model that we have here is, sorry, I apologise for the graphics, it was done by a, a computer programmer. Uh, <laughs> There are many steps of models, many plugins, many levels of plugins that can process the data and you can have different models. A lot of research can happen on this platform and a lot of extension and development can happen on this platform. Um, so we tried to make it generic and at the heart of it is a machine learning neural net, a small brain effectively. And the brain is taking these inputs and producing outputs. And if you know anything about machine learning, um, the, the way these work is quite, it seems almost magic, but it's because it works like human brains do, where neurons are, are being uh, strengthened. So it's very exciting stuff. We have a very first version. Um, what we're doing right now is training that brain so that Moodle, when it comes, when you get the fresh copy of Moodle, it already has some understanding of how education works. And to do that we need to train the brain on a lot of data. And we need real data, messy data, like whole university Moodle sites. Uh, and if you want to be involved, um, go to that link, moodle.org, it's very small, uh, or go to research.moodle.net, or just call me, or someone. 
Um, because we already have, uh, I think we've got five universities have already given us their entire Moodle sites, um, anonymised, so there's no names in there. Uh, everything's anonymised, you can't even tell what university it is. And we're processing that and we're, we're losing that to train the system. So that's going to improve over time. Moodle 3.4 is the one we're working on now. And I, I decided to, to say no new features. Just stop with the new features, everybody. Just fix what things we have. Usability. So it's really about usability. Um, there are significant visual changes, but there's no new features. So one of them is the calendar. Uh, the calendar will work much more like your other calendars where you drag and drop things around um, and it's, it makes a lot of sense straight away. Um, the participants page and the enrolments page, which are awful user experience, uh, be combined into one. So you just have, these are the users in my course and I'm going to get some from here and I get some from here and you can do your enrolments and everything and connect to systems all on one page. There, there is a bunch of other smaller projects. That's a, an internal document showing the, the development over the next few months that we're doing uh, in the core. So there are some things like uh, fixing forum emails so that they have attachments. Right? That forum emails never had attachments on them, right? Simple little things like that. Um, so, yeah. Longer term, we're going to keep focusing on usability. In fact, I'm even thinking maybe 3.5 will do the same thing. No new features, just usability. Uh, but we also need to get more standard support. We need to get better integrations happening on the side with different other open tools and otherwise. Um, there's some cleaning up of legacy code that needs to be done. There's a lot of uh, what we call technical debt in the system where things were changed but they're never fully completed. Um, a Moodle site copy. So you have a Moodle over here and you have a Moodle over here and you just want to copy the whole site. Just right? This would be very useful to move Moodle sites around the internet. Um, uh, sector specific improvements. There are some things that K-12 schools need. There are some things that universities need, such as uh, archiving and rollover at the end of the year. Uh, there are some things that workplaces need, um, and that's more to do with uh, re courses that repeat, things like that. The analytics I already talked about, and lastly VR, AR support. And how many people here have tried virtual reality? Like a, how many people have tried virtual reality where your hands were in there? Like your hands are literally in the space. Okay, only about 10 or 12 people. So I really encourage you to find an HTC Vive or some, something like that where you have controllers in your hand and you're in the space and you can walk around the space and you can pick up things and you can fire arrows and you can do stuff in virtual reality. And once you feel that, then when you think about AR, where it gets down to the size of glasses plus a phone, and this is coming in a couple of years, uh, where over the real world you have the digital world on top. The scope for simulations, for uh, so many educational applications is, is huge. Now Moodle doesn't need to be in there. Where Moodle is interesting is Imagine you're doing it, you, as a teacher, you said to all the students here, go into the simulation and, I don't know, fix a nuclear power plant or something, right? Very dangerous. So they go through the simulation in the virtual space. If the application did any assessment, where does that go? It needs to go back to Moodle. And if you're a teacher now looking at the results of all the how did your students do in this, uh, in this activity, the second thing that would be nice is you could click and then in your glasses you see a replay and you can see the student doing the activity. So you can jump in and see a recording of what they did. 
So these kinds of things are where Moodle fits in. Moodle still is very much focused on doing what it does well. We're not looking at turning all courses into boxes and stuff like that. It doesn't make sense. All right. Moodle Mobile. So if you haven't looked at the Moodle Mobile app lately, it's looking pretty good. Uh, how many people here use the Moodle Mobile app? Got some? Okay, about half of you. Um, it's come a long, long way since the last time I was in Germany, uh, in Lübeck, two years ago, just over two years ago. Uh, this shows the development of the core features over time through the versions. And the versions of the app now are the same as the Moodle version. So we're up to 3.3 of the mobile app as well. And you can see now they're almost all green. So almost every little piece of functionality of Moodle is now available in the app. Um, the two major features left are the database module. What's that in German, actually? Datenbank. Datenbank, easy. Um, so that's, that's coming in 3.3.1. They're just finishing that now. And the workshop module, which I know has a different name. What is it? Cool. <laughs> so, I'm not even going to try it. Um, that's coming in 3.4. And that's the last of the big functionality. Probably a lot of you aren't even using the workshop module. So, your students already have 100% functionality. Uh, now, the Moodle mobile app can be skinned. It can be themed. Um, and there are two ways to do that. The first way is you can actually make a CSS file and put it into your Moodle site. And when the standard app connects, it takes the CSS and styles itself. And it can match your main Moodle site. But there is another way where we do, the, we do it all for you and we make a branded app. So Moodle HQ now does this as a service. We actually make an app with your name in the app stores, with your university or school, with your own logo and all your own colours, and you own that app. And we update that app for you every two months, so you always have the latest features on it. Um, and that's about 3,000 euros a year. And we already have a whole lot of uh, universities already doing this, and it's going very well. So we're getting good at it. Um, and I would really encourage you, if you're if you haven't thought about it, that it's a good experience for your students to go to, you know, University of Mannheim in the App Store, download, logos on their phone, click, opens, they don't have to type in the URL, they just put a username and password, uh, or use their Google login or whatever, it all works, and then um, they have your app. Uh, we also have coming soon Moodle Desktop, which is a version of the app for desktop. And I can show you very quickly. Here it is. So uh, this will be out probably in a couple of weeks for Windows and then the other platforms. But I'm running on a Mac, as you can see. So uh, everything works. So it's pretty cool. And this can be branded as well. So um, that's coming out very soon too. Very useful for those Windows devices, Windows 10, that sort of thing. It works good on those. Uh, and uh, I think every platform, Mac and Linux, uh, will work very well too. <laughs> so the third thing we do is Moodle Partner Services. And we, we currently have 88 Moodle partners. Uh, I'm sorry, Ralph is sick. I hope he's okay. Um, he's not here. Uh, but we have two partners in Germany, Elidia and Moodle Rooms. Uh, we are doing a lot of work with the Moodle partners to improve that whole partnership program. Um, to uh, oh, you're here. Hello. Um, to we're doing a lot of work to um, uh, give them more materials. So we want to make, uh, improve the quality of the whole network of partners so that they're, they're very up to date, 
Uh, they have the latest in training and, and uh, they do a lot of uh, certifications and things like that. Um, another thing we're actually doing is we're, we're planning to start being more involved, Moodle being involved in some very large projects. And by large, I mean Saudi Arabia rolling out Moodle to their entire school system. And so we're now working uh, with various partners to make things like that happen as Moodle, as a, as a consortium. Number four, Moodle Cloud. <laughs> so this launched since last I was here. We now have 21,000 active Moodle sites on Moodle Cloud. Um, most of them are running the free version, uh, of course. But it's very, very active and it's going really, really well. Um, this is an example of one of them. This is one of my test Moodle Cloud sites. As you can see, it's got ninth grade beard curling. Very <laughs> useful course. Um, there is a number of very cheap packages. Uh, $1,000 Australian is like 600 euros a year for the largest one that's there. Um, so we intend to have more packages here. And so we're going to work on um, uh, a better interface for getting in and out, for more nicer emails and, and to make it very easy to get these uh, simple Moodle sites. Um, improved education as you come in so that you, people who don't know Moodle can learn Moodle right there. More integrations with other SaaS systems so you can add, for example, Wirus very soon, I hope. <laughs> Click. You can add uh, Big Blue Button. You can add um, a lot of other things that are, are coming. Uh, new packages. So for various types of uses, there will be new packages for particular types of users. And remember I talked about the site copy. You'll be able to copy a Moodle site into the cloud. And this is useful for some of smaller schools where maybe a student set up their Moodle site and then left. And they're going, okay, who's looking after our Moodle site now? They don't know. So if we can make it so there's a button where they can migrate to a subscription service based in Europe, if you're a European, then, then you're just paying a couple of hundred euros a, a, a year or something and then you still have the service sitting there. And you don't ever have to worry about upgrades or anything again. Uh, and likewise, say you start on Moodle Cloud and you uh, reach the limits and it's getting very popular and very big and you want to migrate to out of it, where well, you can click a button and migrate your whole site somewhere else to a Moodle partner or to your own hosted site and then you can grow from there. So this idea of copying will get very interesting. Moodle training. So we run a MOOC twice a year called Learn Moodle. How many people here have ever taken this MOOC? Anyone? About 10 of you. Uh, it is mostly in English, although we do allow people to use any languages in the forums. It's a four-week MOOC. Uh, that just, it's a beginning course for showing you how Moodle works. What's very interesting about it is every time it runs, the usage is like this. And normally when you see MOOCs usage, they're really high at the beginning and then whoosh, they go down really low. But these have very good usage right through the four weeks which is very cool. Um, so this actually, uh, the latest one started three days ago. Uh, if, you, if you're interested or you know someone who might want to do this, go to learn.moodle.net, it's free. You can go in and get involved in the MOOC. But this is just the beginning because we have a plan to make a, I have a team of five people working on this right now to build a full curriculum so from beginning, and it's not really just about Moodle, it's about how to be a good online teacher using Moodle because it's the best open source solution around, of course. Um, but it's a, it's a curriculum from the very beginning, you know nothing, to I know I'm now a super uber administrator at the top. 
And the curriculum will be like a series of modules. And some of, like, imagine an arts degree. So you have core modules, things you have to do, and then there's a lot of options. So maybe you don't care about competencies. That could be an optional module or rubrics. Um, and there might be a simple grade book and then advanced grade book. Uh, all of those modules are like, going to be defined. They're going to have uh, content materials for them. They'll be available online, but also at MOOCs. So when there's a workshop day, like yesterday, you could imagine some of these modules running, people giving those modules at a MOOC, at a, at a conference. And not only Moodle MOOCs, also other education MOOC, uh, conferences. So there are some very big education conferences for teachers. I want to see Moodle workshops happening there. Right? Moodle partners, I hope, will take up the same, uh, the same structure. So the courses and training they give can use the same structure. So we all together collaborate on how do we learn this stuff? How do we learn how to teach online? What is the best way to do that worldwide? All those modules, they have points. And so once someone has said, yes, this person is sort of has passed this module, you get registered in the system, you accumulate points, and when you have a certain number of points, you get a certification. So this replaces the MCCC that we have now, which I don't like. Uh, uh, but this will be a new certification system. And that can be something for your portfolio. You know, I'm a level one Moodle teacher, a level two Moodle teacher, a level, uh, Moodle administrator, and so on. So the first version of that should be available uh, later this year. Five people are working hard on it right now. If you are already working on something similar, please talk to us. Because I think we need to collaborate on this. We have a lot of people who can help on that. Now, I'm going very slow. I'm going to speed up. Number six, Moodle uh, Academy. This, again, is about MOOCs. Um, and we've made a prototype system, uh, which is a, a customised version of Moodle for running MOOCs only. So it's, it's uh, useful for, like, say, the University of Manhattan. I actually don't know the situation here. But say you wanted to run some MOOCs for the public. You may not want 100,000 people coming into your IT systems. You maybe want to run this externally because it's more of a marketing thing for the university. Here's an example of our courses. If you like it, maybe you want to enrol in a full course or something. So we're building this as a platform for most of the universities to offer their MOOCs uh, on a wider scale, but using Moodle not using edX or Coursera or anything else, because if your courses inside the university are Moodle, the MOOC should also be Moodle, otherwise it's not really very realistic. And the, the way the courses are structured, they're vastly simplified versions of Moodle, so they look more like traditional MOOCs, where you have a lot of videos um, and a lot less complication. They're more simple for very large numbers of people. So we already have one university on the prototype site. Uh, still some time until we open this up wider because there's a lot more work to do, but that's coming. Oh, that should say it's number seven. So the Moodle community in the marketplace. Now, we already have Moodle.org, which has been a Moodle site for... Oh, 15 years. 14, 15 years, um, and it's always been running on Moodle, which was, being, which was good. It's a good demonstration of Moodle, but it's not ideal. The interactions that happen here are not that good, to be honest, in this, in this day and age. Another, another aspect of the community is the Moodle Users Association. They have their own Moodle site. How many people here are members of the Moodle Users Association, actually? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, okay, good. Um, so this is the association, uh, the funds of the membership goes into a pot and they decide what to spend it on and they pay us to develop new features. 
Moodle.net was something that I created, God, so many years ago, and we never really gave it a good life. Um, but the idea is for sharing courses. You can upload a course into Moodle.net, uh, Creative Commons, and other people can download it. But it was never implemented very well. And we have Moodle plugins, which is a very successful database on Moodle.org. Um, and uh, the main guy behind that is sitting right over here, David Mudrak. So I think these stats are slightly out of date, but there's over 1,300 plugins in there, uh, 742 developers. And how many people here have a, have a plugin in the plugins database? Whoa, okay, that's awesome, like 20 or 30 people. Um, so that's been improving over the years to make it easier to find plugins and extend Moodle's functionality. So what we want to do is build a new system from scratch that kind of combines all that functionality of those other things. And it's more like a professional development space. So imagine it would look like this. You come into a blank course. You're a teacher, you've come to Moodle, you've got a course, you've got nothing in it. And on the side of the screen is the community. It's right there. So a couple of clicks, you can find people who are teaching the same subject as you, in the same language, at the same level. Very easily. And you can talk with them, you can ask them for help, you can download a template of the course, so you, maybe you're teaching French or something. So you download a French course right there, and everything has rankings and ratings, Everybody has reputation, so if somebody's very helpful, they have a very good reputation in the network. And further than that, if you become a, if you are a helpful person, you might want to start making a living here. Maybe you offer your help for 20 euros for an hour to help somebody with Moodle or help them with teaching French in Moodle. So to create this kind of a space where people can share things freely, but also make a living. I mean, people should be paid for their time. Software should be free, but people should never be free, as I usually say. Um, so to build this foundation for an economy where we can work together and help each other and learn together and, sh and, and do all those things that I talked about at the beginning. So in that space, I see us integrating all the open resources so rather than you having to go and look at six or seven open repositories of content, it's all connected here already. And you can drag and drop stuff into your course. Create a common stuff, all these sorts of stuff. Um, in there we can have crowdfunding. So if you want to have a plugin and you want to, as a developer, you want to work on that plugin, but nobody's paying you to do it, you can crowdfund. You could say, you could, you could give the developer two dollars, two euros or something a month or you, know, you could sponsor them, you could subscribe to them. We haven't worked out all the details, but do you see the kind of thing I'm going for here? It's like a Moodle community environment that has economy built into it, has openness built into it, um, where we can all support each other. So this hasn't started yet. It's a project that should happen and will happen soon, but I want to have a lot of people involved and get involved with it. So if you like the idea, um, come and talk to me. So that, here we come. What, what you can do to help. Get a branded Moodle mobile app. You can do it today. Just like go to moodle.com and fill out the form and start talking to us. You can join the Moodle Users Association. <coughs> It, that can be very cheap. I think the lowest membership is 60 euros a year, something, and it goes up to 6,000 euros a year if you want to be a gold member. Use Moodle for research. So, you know, it's open software is the best for research because you can replicate results, you can share your, your results, uh, you, can, you can write plugins that collect data from other people's sites. Right? You can do big scale research. Uh, or joining with the analytics uh, 
tools. If you need a Moodle site very fast, come to Moodle Cloud. If you need consulting, hosting, or any other services, please go to a Moodle partner because 10% of what Moodle partners earn comes back to the project. If you think you've got good ideas about anything that I've talked about, then just get in touch. Right? I'm, I'm here. We're all here. We're, it's a small planet, really. Um, it's not hard to find us. If you're involved in grant funding for a Moodle-related project, please let us know. Right? Try and involve us somehow. We have, there's so many ways that we can be involved, uh, including doing development. But mostly, if, if we develop these grant projects with a view to being in core or being a plug-in, um, then it really helps everybody. Are you or your friends very wealthy? And you want to feel less guilty by investing your money in something that really helps the world? Call me now. There's my phone number. You'll get through on this phone. I, I was going to have flashing lights and maybe some sexy pictures, but I didn't, I didn't get there. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I think some of these very wealthy people should put their money into some social causes. So, to finish up... Uh, we have a fire, we have a fire called Moodle. I know all of you have your own fires, uh, your own institutions, your own businesses, uh, your own situations where Moodle is involved and you're growing your own fire, but we, we're all part of the same fire. And if we can combine our energies more efficiently, then I think we can do really good things for the world. So I'll finish there. Thank you very much. Please get in touch.